Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly update. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So dad's job is never done. I'm going to record this video really, really quick, get you guys set up for tomorrow's trading session. And I got a softball game followed by a basketball game all summer long, which is great. It's exactly what we want. It means life is getting slowly back together, back to normal, and kids are enjoying themselves. And, and it's been so rough if you're a parent for, you know, a lot of the kids just been mentally so grueling over the last year, it's so nice just for them to kind of go back uh, into routine. So let's talk about it really, really quickly. Uh, last night, uh, you had a pretty mixed bag of earnings. You had Google was very, very good. Uh, you had uh, Microsoft, not so much. You had AMD, pretty good. So we were kind of having a pretty mixed bag going into today's session. And the question was, who was going to take control? So if you look at uh, the indexes today, you're not going to get a really good sign, a uh, really big indication of what was what. Um, number one, you had the Dow down 164 points, which is not a big deal. You had the NDX uh, down about 58 points, not a big deal. But what was a big deal was to kind of the follow up on the strong performance, for example, on a Google or on an AMD of what was going to happen today. And we started the day pretty aggressively, right? You had big, big moves coming out of Google. Uh, we caught a really good opening range play on this thing off this uh, 13, uh, 2397 level, really, really big uh, expansion moves. But you had names like AMD that were very, very strong last night, completely gave it all up. And if you look at a lot of names, especially in the first part of the morning, it felt like a really intense, aggressive reversal was about to come. And when you, co when you combine that with Boeing news, and for a second there, I actually thought that Boeing actually had a shot to go red to green, uh, just because it was down like two, two and a half dollars after its earnings. It really wasn't doing anything. And then obviously it spazzed out and, and went lower. But the question today was, what was today's action going to spill over into tonight's earnings? You had uh, Apple coming out. You had uh, eBay coming out. You had um, eBay, Apple, Qualcomm coming out, uh, and obviously Facebook. And there was a big, big numbers, and there were big bets uh, all over the place. Uh, this morning and yesterday, you saw the weekly uh, call buyers coming in on the 140 weeklies on Apple. You saw the 320 weekly call buyers coming in on uh, Facebook. And the question was, were they going to kind of reiterate the point of what Google did last night, or is it going to be one of those scenarios they had big, big runs like a Microsoft did, too much, too fast, and profit-taking uh, skewed the shares. And we got our answer pretty aggressively today uh, after the close, and we'll get to the pivots in a second. Um, what I liked about today's trading action was, if you guys remember last night or last night's video, you had a lot of initial big moves, right? Like the Roku's of the world and the videos in the world yesterday, the squares of the world. And then they just all died, right? They literally all died, you know, an hour into the day. Today's session was much more orderly, okay? Uh, whether it was the Google opening range highs, there was some uh, smaller names. Um, there was a kind of something for everybody, but definitely the fireworks came after the close. I started putting uh, pivots in right before, you know, right after the close for Facebook, for Qualcomm, and for Apple. And it was incredibly important to understand the macro channels where everything were, where everything needed to reclaim. And once Qualcomm, once Facebook, and once Apple came out and you know beat their numbers pretty well. It was a really, really aggressive move, uh, especially in Facebook uh, and in Apple. Um, I think going into tomorrow, based on the weight of where uh, Apple is and the weight of Facebook is, you have to love uh, what we're seeing for tomorrow. And Thursday, you know, you got Amazon, right? You got buyers coming in, you know, all week, you know, literally all week. Even you take apart uh, and put aside the fact that, you know, that rumor came out, traders circulating that uh, there was a split by Charlie Gasparino at, at, in, um, on Fox Business. But even taking that aside, people and traders are positioning into earnings. You know, you're talking about on Amazon, 
short-term uh, weekly and monthly expiration for the 3,400, the 3,500, the 3,600. We even saw as high as the 4,000. Now, again, you know, everybody's talking about like, they should split, they should split. If that ever happens, that happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But if you're watching Amazon tomorrow and you're talking and you hear the word split, just close your eyes and click your mouse because the stock uh, will get very, very aggressive and you have to be uh, prepared for that. So going into tomorrow, uh, there's a lot of value, right? Let me give you some names uh, that I actually do like uh, going into tomorrow's session. Um, this ETWO, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a SPAC. And usually I wouldn't look at this thing, but uh, you know, I'll show you a pivot in a second. So it pivoted today, closed above this whole entire channel. This is an $11 stock. Uh, we saw nonstop today, the June 1250 caller buyers coming in very, very aggressively, like one on top of the other, on top of the other. I really like this thing. If this thing starts taking out a macro channel going into tomorrow, then you got this $12 on deck. And if it takes out that $12, you can get a bit, really big move uh, after that. Uh, AI, I've been talking about AI for a couple of days. It's just getting tighter and tighter here. Really, really tight. Uh, very, very aggressive. I'm still watching this thing. If this thing gets above this channel here, there's a lot of room. I have to check the earnings date, but there's definitely, definitely a lot of room uh, for potential on this trade. Uh, a name like Letter U, right? Another one of these uh, 2020 IPOs that were just kind of forgotten, right? Kind of forgotten, had the big run, and then the shares got cut in half. Again, look at this channel here. Again, it's starting to get really, really tight. If this thing starts building above this supply zone, this thing could explode. So there's definitely good value uh, on tap for tomorrow. Obviously, uh, opening range high plays on you know Facebook and Apple, um, even Qualcomm. You know, even Qualcomm had a pretty nice quarter. That's all on the table. But the most important part, guys, like like I've been saying every single day, you're going to have a different personality every single day of the week, right? Uh, momentum is as only as good as the next day starting pitcher. So again, we, I'm a huge Yankee fan. Uh, Garrett Cole could come out and fire eight innings and strike out 14 and get the victory. And then Jordan Montgomery could come the next day, get blown up for seven runs in an inning a third. It happens. So you have to adjust uh, towards market sentiment. You have to adjust uh, towards the landscape. And we are. And right now, the market is very, very good. Uh, if you look at the cues right now after the close, obviously, uh, because the moves, especially in Facebook and Apple, you're getting a big move here. You're getting back. You're getting a move here to the 341 level. So you're talking about a $2 gap here just on these earnings uh, after hours. Let's see, right? Let's see if the momentum can continue. But this is the macro number right now uh, going forward in the queues. This 342.30s level, obviously uh, very, very important. Uh, the Russell continues to grind. Again, here's a perfect example of the Russell getting above the supply zone. You can see it in every Every single time it touches it, it goes back up, touches it, goes back up. So it's it's putting in a nice base here. If the Russell can start reclaiming 228.70s, 229 on the close, then it's going to go to all-time highs. Very, very impressive there as well. Uh, you have the spies kind of going in this holding pattern, uh, digesting earnings, um, you know, kind of waiting it out. The sellers look pretty comfortable at those levels. You can see, even with despite the Dow and uh, the NASDAQ 100, uh, being down, you can see the spies did nothing, which is a good thing. Again, sellers are comfortable at these levels, and that's exactly what you want to see instead of very, very uh, aggressive uh, profit taken. And obviously, the Dow has just been the superhero all year. A little bit of consolidation here in these uh, in this range for the last two weeks, but does it really make a difference? The Dow is only 30 stocks, and at the end of the day, it's this very, very small taste of what the general market uh, is. So let's quickly go through uh, today's pivots, right? Quickly go through today's pivots. And then I got to run. I got softball. I got basketball. I got dad things to do. Uh, anyway, guys. So, yeah, like I was saying this morning, uh, watch, you know, watch possible red to green on, on Boeing. Uh, it didn't sound like the, the quarter was that bad. And, and again, was anybody really optimistic about uh, Boeing's quarter going to today? So I figured, hey, listen, there's a shot. It's only down a couple of bucks. Uh, after they came out with earnings of, hey, if this thing, you know, it just goes red to green, there's a shot, obviously, uh, that never happened. Uh, GSX 35 rejected twice pre-market on Goldman Sachs. Upgrade needs to build. Here was GS, right? Here was GS. Oops, excuse me. Wrong stock. Here was GSX, right? Here was GSX. Here was the 35, right? 
Here's the 35 area pre-market that I kept on building, right? 35, 35, 35, right? 35, 35, finally get off the 35 and went all the way up to the 36.50s level. Nice little move there. Uh, Netflix never got down there. Hig, uh, Hig actually liked the daily chart, but you know the stock got murdered because their deal, I think, fell apart with uh, Chubb. Uh, Crocs, nice move, huge move yesterday. Uh, there was two ways to play this thing, potential washout on the 9580s uh, or a base above 99 on the 60 minute. And Crocs put up a nice second day move, had a big move yesterday on earnings. Uh, it took out this whole channel here of 99 and went all the way up uh, to 103 before reversing. Really nice move on Crocs. Uh, Pinterest actually lost some money on Pinterest. Um, not a lot, but whatever. I lost about 83 cents. Unfortunately, I didn't take the 68 short. I took uh, closer to 67. And unfortunately for me, there was a reload. Um, there was a reload buyer at the bottom of the range. Combined that with SSR, and you know they squeezed me for like 80 cents or so. Not the end of the world, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, Airbnb uh, 180 needs to build. Here's Airbnb. I still like Airbnb. They came. Uh, they also came for next month's uh, $200 calls. It looks like they're positioning into earnings. So here's the whole channel, 180. It went to about 180, 167. I still like it. I still think uh, it could stretch out to this 186 level. Uh, looks really good. Space never got to 24. Uh, letter U, I still like. AMD rejected 90 uh, several times, never got there. Uh, Crocs take on the way up. Yeah, Tesla, here's the funny thing. It's Tesla, I, uh, I got rejected also. So I got long off the 708. And it got rejected there, so I lost a buck on there before you cry for me. It was an awesome uh, opening range trade on Google that I caught for 23, so that was good. Uh, CRM, great job for all you guys for holding this thing. Finally starting to stretch today. I uh, traded up almost to the 239 level. Really, really nice there as well. Uh, ETWO, we just talked about that a couple of minutes ago. 109011 uh, needs to build. Nice looking chart. It finally broke out uh, today. Uh, above this uh, 109011, now it needs to attack that 12 uh, to complement those uh, June 12 and a half uh, call buyers that came in. AI is still like, CCIV is still like. Shout out to my man. I put the Crocs pivot specifically, specifically, especially specifically for you. So good job there. I hope you did very, very well with it. New highs as well. And here's where the fireworks really, really started, guys. Uh, here's, you know, I put all these pivots in for earnings. Uh, Apple, 135, 50, 136 for those who are playing earnings. It needs to build. Right now, Apple uh, traded as high as the 39 and change. Uh, 316 for those playing earnings. Just in case Facebook takes out the 316, Facebook right now is at 325. And Qualcomm, again, sticking to the theme, uh, 141 needs to build for all you guys who are playing earnings. It's so important right now. Uh, Qualcomm is uh, trading into the 4344s. It's so crucial to know the areas where they need to confirm macro. So there are no surprises. So you're not randomly chasing stocks uh, into earnings. Everything needs to be calculated. You need to know your supply and demand zones before the trade starts so you can me mechanically uh, move along and not emotionally chase. So guys, I have a great, great night. God bless you all. Uh, the video will be posted into my Twitter feed uh, later. Um, not sure who's doing it, but it's, uh, somebody is doing it. I think Kyle is on vacation. Have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see all of you tomorrow. Take care.